This is a three-part video series on crocheting a square motif, the half motif triangular shape component, and also joining the two pieces together so that you can join your motifs together as you go instead of having to sew them at the end. Watch video part one for the square, video part two for the triangle, and video part three for the joining technique. In this tutorial, I'm using Friends Cotton 8-4, which is 100% cotton sport weight yarn by Hobie Yarns, and I'm using a size four millimeter or G6 crochet hook, but you can do this in any size yarn, in any size crochet hook. You'll just want to follow your yarn band to get a size range for the hook to choose. And again, depending on what size motifs you want to make, you can do this in any size yarn to create any number of gorgeous projects from scarves to afghans, wraps, shawls, and garments. Follow the link in the video description to go to my website where you can get the step-by-step -step written instructions plus detailed charts to follow along side-by-side -side with this three-part video tutorial. Let's get started. Make sure to watch video part one to learn how to make the square motif and now in video part two I'm going to show you how to make the half motif or triangle version of the square motif. It's so interesting to join squares and triangles together to create so many different types of fabric. And we're going to start it the same way we started the last one with a chain five ring. So it's chain five and slip stitch to the fifth chain from your hook to form a ring. One of the biggest differences between a square and a triangle version or half of the square is that although we worked in rounds for this one without turning our work, we are going to work back and forth in rows now and turn our work at the end of each row. Row one begins with a chain five, which counts as a double crochet chain two, then a double crochet in the ring, double crochet is yarn over your hook, insert your hook in the ring, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two loops on your hook, chain two double crochet in the ring, whoops, chain two, double crochet in the ring. We want to do this until we have six double crochets. We want to continue until we have six double crochets and five chain two spaces. There we go. There's what the end of row one should look like. You want to turn your work and slip stitch into the first chain two space. Round two, or row two begins with a chain three, which counts as a double crochet, and work four more double crochets in that first chain two space. In each of the next four chain two spaces, we're going to work five double crochets. This is what your work should look like at the end of row two. Row three begins with a chain three and turn your work. One double crochet into each of the next four double crochets. And I repeat for row three is chain one, one double crochet into each of the next five double crochets. You wanna repeat this all the way across. This is what your work should look like at the end of row three. Row four begins with a chain eight, which counts as a double crochet chain five. Turn your work. And over the first five stitches, we're gonna work a five treble crochet together. Yarn over twice, insert your hook in the first stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two loops on your hook. Do that four more times. At this point, you should have five partially started treble crochets, and you should have six loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through all six loops on your hook. That's a five treble crochet together. Chain five, 
double crochet in the next chain one space, chain five, and five treble crochet over the next five double crochets. And you want to repeat chain five double, chain five, five treble crochet together across. At the end of the last repeat, we finish the row with a chain five and a double crochet in the same stitch that we worked the last leg in. And this is what your work should look like at the end of row four. Row five begins with turning our work and slip stitching into the first chain five space. chain one and single crochet in that same chain five space. Chain five and work sing chain five, one single crochet in the next chain five space all the way across. You should have a total of nine chain five spaces at the end of this row. And this is what your work should look like at the end of row five. Row six begins with slip stitching into the first chain five space, chain three, which counts as a double crochet, work two double crochets, chain three, three double crochets in that same chain five space. Okay, so it's chain three, two doubles, chain three, three doubles, all in the same chain five space. Then it's chain five, single crochet in the next chain five space. You want to do chain five, single crochet three times. Then it's chain five. And in the next chain five space, work three double crochet, chain three, three double crochet. And it's chain five, single crochet in the next chain five space three times. Chain five, and three double crochet, chain three, three double crochet in the last chain five space. And this is what your work should look like at the end of row six. And you can now see that we're starting to get that triangular shape. Row seven begins with slip stitching across these double crochets to get into that first chain three space. Then chain three, which counts as our first double crochet. And in that same chain three space, work two double crochet, chain three, three double crochet. chain five, single crochet in the next chain five space. You want to do that four times. Chain five, three double crochet, chain three, three double crochet in the next chain three space. And our repeat for this row is chain five single four times, then chain five, three double crochet, chain three, three double crochet, and you wanna repeat that one more time. And this is what your work should look like at the end of row seven. 
row eight, we're going to turn our work and slip stitch across the double crochets and into the first chain three space. Chain three, which counts as a double crochet. Two double crochet, chain three, three double crochets all in that first chain three space. chain five, single crochet in the next chain five space, five times, And in the next, then chain five, then in the next chain three space, work three double crochet, chain three, three double crochet. Chain five. And our repeat for this row is chain five single five times, then chain five, three double crochet, chain three, three double crochet, and you want to repeat that once more. Okay, that's the end. This is what your work should look like at the end of row eight, and this is what your work should look like at the end of the half motif or triangular shaped motif. You want to cut the yarn and fasten off. And so now you have the square and triangle version of this motif that you can combine in so many different ways, whether you want to just do a fabric of just squares or a fabric of squares and triangles to do the joining in the diamond formation instead of the square formation to make all sorts of fabrics from shawls to afghans to garments of all sizes and shapes. You can do this in any weight yarn to get any size motif you like. You could even add or subtract some of these final rounds to make the motifs different sizes as well. Seriously, the sky's the limit. In this tutorial, I happen to use Friends Cotton 8.4 by Hobie Yarns. It's 100% cotton yarn. Really, really lovely and soft to work with. Let me know in the comments if you would like to see different types of garments or projects made with these motifs. In the next video, I will show you step-by-step -step how to join these motifs as you go for no sewing. This is a three-part video series on crocheting a square motif, the half motif triangular shape component, and also joining the two pieces together so that you can join your motifs together as you go instead of having to sew them at the end. Watch video part one for the square, video part two for the triangle, and video part three for the joining technique. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions at all, please feel welcome to leave them for me in the comments. Let us make time to create, share, and inspire today and every day. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.